I'd like to respond here to another question from our Patreon community. This one comes from Leonard and Ellen Zablau and has to do with socialism and China. It's an important question. I'm glad to respond both to the two Zablaus but also to the entire Patreon community since I think the question will be of interest very broadly. Here's the basic idea of the question. I talk a great deal about the difference between private capitalism and state capitalism. And of course, I also talk about the difference between capitalism and socialism. So the question is, what exactly was the Soviet Union or what exactly is the People's Republic of China? And my answer is based on the analysis of these two systems that I've spent a lifetime engaged in, and that indeed, together with my colleague Steve Resnick, I produced a book back, oh now, 15 years ago, called Class Theory and History, an analysis, in that case of the Soviet Union, to answer precisely the question, what is the relationship between socialism and communism on the one hand, and capitalism, both private and state forms, on the other. So let me address what's in that book in a simple way to deal with this question. Yes, I believe China is a state capitalism. What does that mean? Well, it's not private capitalism by and large because for most of its history and even today, a huge portion of the industrial might of this now second in the world economy, China, is in the hands of the government. The government hires workers, Chinese people. It is state capitalism because the employer is the state. Now there is also in China today, more than perhaps ever since the 1949 revolution, a sizable private capitalist sector where the employer is not a state official but is rather a private citizen who is either elected to be on the board of directors by shareholders or is himself or herself a capitalist who goes out and hires workers, produces products, and sells them. So you might, to be accurate, say that China today is a mixture of private and state capitalism. And indeed, in the history of capitalism everywhere, there have almost always been mixtures. Some things that the government does, hiring workers to produce goods and services. For example, here in the United States, Amtrak, the post office, and a whole host of other industries. But most of the United States is private capitalist. China is different in the sense that the dominant part of the economy is still state capitalist, was even more so after 1949 until 10, 15 years ago. But it is a mixture. Well, then what is socialism from my perspective? Here things get slightly complicated. The Chinese Communist Party, which is dominant in China politically, insists, and it always has, that China is socialist. In other words, for them, when the state takes over industry, pushes away the private capitalist, partly or entirely, then you have socialism. So in that view, socialism and state capitalism are pretty much the same. But for me, coming out of the Marxian tradition, which I learned from and which I have found very useful in this way, there is another stage to human development that hasn't been accomplished, neither in Russia nor in China. And that is the transformation of the workplace. Not about whether the government or private are employers. The real question for a socialist is whether the workers themselves become their own employers. Whether you have transformed the workplace, which is after all where adults spend most of their lives, five out of the seven days of the week at least, most of the best hours of those five days, is where we as adults spend most of our lives. That place has to be transformed. It has to stop being a hierarchy where a few people, mostly who are not workers themselves, 
make all the decisions, the board of directors or the council of ministers in a state capitalism, they make the decisions and the rest of us do the work. Socialism means, I think, a transformation of that situation where the workers are no longer order takers but are both order takers and order givers. They are their own bosses. They run, own, operate their own enterprises. That would be a transformation that for me qualifies for socialism in a way that moving from private to state capitalism, whatever its virtues, falls far short of. And I think the problems of the Soviet Union that unraveled it, like the problems building in China, are testimony to the fact that if all you do is move from private to state capitalism and there's no transformation of the workplace where we all live, you will have very serious problems in even sustaining the state capitalism you have created. So I think the Chinese are facing that problem today as the Russians did and what happened to the Soviet Union ought to stand as a cautionary tale to the People's Republic of China since they will have to face the same set of problems and contradictions. I hope this question has been responded to in a way all of you in the Patreon community find valuable. Thanks for your attention.